Hi, my name is Ilma, and today I'd like to share Psalm 65. O God of our salvation, praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgression. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation. The hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, oh, that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for you so have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly settling its riches. Psalm 65, 1 to 10. This psalm praises the Lord, who is the God of our salvation. I love how David worships the Lord by focusing on all the Lord faithfully does to his people. He magnifies it how the Lord blesses all those who are in awe of all the wonderful things that the Lord has provided for us. He gave them a temple where they could dwell in his goodness and God's people is forever grateful for all the things that God provides for them, such as the wonders of nature and how he controls all things he made. Adoration. Praise the Lord of our salvation and our creator. Confession. Forgive me each time I fail to count my blessings and how wonderful you are to your people. Thank you for all the provisions you give all your chosen people. Supplication. May all people recognize the greatest designer of our world and our lives. Reflection. Why is it necessary for believers to give thanks and praise to the God of our salvation? Who has ever loved you unconditionally in this world? I suppose no one because there's always a catch. When somebody loves us, they want something back in return. Uh, parents expect um, loyalty from their children. Parents expect them to be obeyed. Uh, children expect their parents to give everything they need or want. Um, our spouses, we expect our spouse to help us to, uh, to, to, to fill our needs. And um, there is nobody usually because that's our nature we're fallen and we're, we're selfish in nature um, so that whenever we give love to someone we expect something back in return so God is very different he doesn't do that he loves us the way we are it's the things that we are exposed to our experiences with our with our family that makes us expect things from God but he doesn't expect the same thing that we expect from him. He only wants us to follow him because when we follow him, we, um, we fit in the plan, his, his big plan for all of us, for all of mankind. It's necessary to give thanks to God if you are a believer because um, as a believer, you know that your salvation is given to you by God. And salvation means that you will have eternal life even after you die. When you die, you know that you are going to, um, to enjoy uh, an eternal life, eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit. So without gratefulness and worship, you can still go to heaven, I think you will, but wouldn't it be nice uh, if you go 
to heaven and then when God asks you, okay, so how did you make a difference in the life of others? How much did you love, you know? Um, and then you can answer with full confidence that you followed him. So that is the reason why we should count our blessings and we should worship the Lord alone. Thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilvaarts.com for artworks and photographs and um, a copy of this blog. And I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel so we can do more videos to, to glorify the Lord. And I just want to say a prayer for everyone who's watching this uh, as we go through this COVID virus um, pandemic all over the world. Um, may we all remember where we come from and may we all realize that there is nothing to fear if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because even if we die even if we take us we will still be with him for eternity so for those who do not know the Lord I encourage you to start knowing him read the Bible because you will know the truth and that will set you free and that will set you free from fear, from panic, from pandemonium, from all the things that the world usually makes you uh, experience. And God does the opposite. So if you believe in God, you don't have that fear. Because if you do, because love and fear cannot work together. So if you're a believer, if you're a true Christian, you will not live in fear. Because in 1 Timothy 2, 7, it says that we do not... We're not given a spirit of fear and timidity, but of love, power, and sound mind. Thanks for watching again. Stay safe and think of others. Pray for everyone because this we, we all need to bow down and ask the Lord to save us from this very, very um, destructive virus. Thanks for watching.